आत्मना सुषमान
He enthroned his grandson. He enthroned his grandson. Who was trained and equally qualified. Who was trained and equally qualified. As the emperor and master. As the emperor and master. Of all the land bordered by the sea. Of all land bordered by the sea. Thereafter, in the capital of Hostinapur, he enthroned his grandson, who was trained and equally qualified as the emperor and master of all the land bordered by the seas. Report by his divine grace, Shri Prabhupada. The total land on the earth bordered by the seas was under the subjugation of, of the king of Hastinapur. Maharaj Yudhisthira trained his grandson, Maharaj Prichit, who was equally qualified in state administration in the terms of the king's obligation to the citizens. Thus, Pariksit was enthroned on the seat of Maj Yudhisthira prior to his departure back to Godhead. Concerning Maj Pariksit, the specific word used, Vina Yinam, is significant. Why was the king of Hastinapur, at least until that time of Maj Pariksit, accepted as the emperor of the world? The only reason is that the people of the world were happy because of the good administration of the emperor. The happiness of the citizens was due to the ample production of natural produce, such as grains, fruits, milk, herbs, valuable stones, minerals, and everything the people needed. They were even free from all bodily miseries, anxieties of mind, and disturbances caused by natural phenomena and other living beings. Because everyone was happy in all respects, there was no resentment. Although there were sometimes battles between the state kings for political reasons and supremacy, everyone was trained to attain the highest goal of life. And therefore the people were also enlightened enough not to quarrel over trivialities. The influence of the age of Kali gradually infiltrated the good qualities of both kings and the citizens. But still, I'm sorry, and therefore a tense situation developed between the rulers and the rule. But still, even in this age of disparity between the ruler and the rule, there can be spiritual emolument and God conscious. This is a special prerogative. Thank you, Sheila Prabhupada. I should have Prabhupada. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Nama Om Vishnu Kadaya Krishna Vreshna Yaputale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namane Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pacharne, Nervousatia, Sunnivadi Pasachari Sitarne. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, uh, sometimes the purports are like verses themselves. <laughs> it's, like, it's like so much uh, profound relevance in Shri Prabhupada's purports. We would, uh, it would be very difficult for us to study Srimad Bhagavatam without Sri Prabhupada's purpose. There would be a lot of arguing going on, a lot of debate. So Sri Prabhupada makes a, a very uh, relevant point that uh, Maharaj Pariksit was uh, enthroned specifically uh, right at the juncture when Kali Yuga started taking over. Because before that, it's of course Drapara Yuga. This is very significant because, of, like sometimes when you're doing your preaching work, you're trying to explain to somebody about the four yugas. And you know, sometimes you wonder, well, why is this such a big deal? Why do I need to tell them about four yugas? And then I always say, you know, it's good to date, you know, what time we're in. What time is it right now? Like right now, y'all all know it's about 8 o'clock. And you're thinking, in about 10 minutes, you can get out of here or something. You know? <laughs> so everyone knows what time it is. So we know what year it is. We know what day it is. Right? Prophet said it's a little insane if you don't know what day it is. Yeah. So we're cognizant of our time, place, all those things. So in the yugas, it's significant we should know where we are, what yuga we're in. And to have uh, the ability to adapt 
to that yoga. <laughs> if we're into party yoga, everything's different. We do different stuff. We do Agni Ultras and things like that, and that's relevant. In Kali Yuga, that's not relevant, so we need to know which yuga we're in. So, Prabhupada points out, uh, he, he gave just a little hint that what happened, the main thing, the, uh, the good qualities of both the kings and the citizens, and therefore, a tense situation developed between the ruler and the rule. But still, even in this age of disparity between the ruler and the ruler, there can be special emolument in God consciousness. That is a special prerogative. Prerogative, the word prerogative means uh, a, a, a special opportunity that's normally not there. It's, a, it's not the standard. It's a special chance when you look at the definition. It'll say a special opportunity not normally available. The prerogative. So, what is that special prerogative that Prophet is pointing out? Spiritual emolument. Very big word. Who knows what emolument means? What? Krishna Shaya will know in this one. The dictionary says a salary, a fee, or a profit for employment or office. Read it out loud. I can hear it. I'm deaf. It says, it's a salary or a fee, F-E-E, -E, or profit from employment or office. Bring it here, let me see. <laughs> it's a special payoff. I'm so sorry, I'm just dead. It sounds like a special I just, payoff. I want, to, I want to really know this word and I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Yeah, what he's talking, this is one, this is a, a salary, fee, or profit from employment or office. So basically... That's one way of looking at it. Emolument means uh, to be given a gift or a reciprocal uh, payment. Emolument. Your salary is your emolument. Uh, but basically, it's a special endowment. That's a good word, I think. Uh, we're endowed uh, with a special uh, uh, gift. So everyone knows where this goes, right? We all know. Even though Prophet just puts in a couple sentences, we know what he's talking about. He's talking about the special benediction of the age of Kali is what? Hare Krishna! Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Keva, Kalo Nasteva, Nasteva, So this is it. It's endowed, it's endowed with a special prerogative that simply by chanting Hare Krishna, we don't have to become Kali Yuga people. <laughs> We don't have to argue with every little thing. Like if you go online now and you type, you know, banana yellow, somebody can say, you know, you should not be so judgmental. You know? <laughs> it's just, there is no way people in Kali Yuga can even have a dialogue without fussing. Yes? This, there's a second um, definition that says advantage. A what? Advantage. Advantage. Advantage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Special advantage. Exactly, good one. That's a good one. Advantage, special advantage. So, Krishna consciousness, it transcends ages. It's not like, you know, in Kali Yuga, you have a chance to become Krishna conscious, but you didn't enter Par Yuga, and then in Satya, Trecha Yuga, uh, Satya. You always have a chance to be Krishna conscious, right? The difference is how, how you do it. How you find uh, the opportunity. That's all. Just different means. It's the same Krishna consciousness that exists eternally. So we know you go back far enough, there's this mystic yoga process that people practice. And then Prabhupada is the first yogi who came, who taught us how that's impractical for us. You know, I used to stand on my head and do the lion horse and all that stuff. I did all that yoga stuff. I was in the military, but at night I was in, everybody left and I was the only one there. So I had a yoga book. I would sit down and I would do all the asanas and learn how to do the yoga thing, right? And um, it must have had some, some help a little bit, I guess, but uh, it was kind of like, you know, we, I'm reading, reading, trying to find out what it's all about. And, you know, gradually gravitating to something like Zen Buddhism and then studying all these methods. But nothing ever really, you know, made sense. 
as far as uh, this is a path that's practical for me. This is what I should do. This is how I should uh, dedicate my life to this process. I did, one time I paid $75 for a course where they teach you how to sit in a chair, meditate on your hand until it touched you in the head. <laughs> I'd sit in that chair hour after hour. I guess after a while I thought I was doing it or something. But it was just so much nonsense. Uh, uh, Y'all remember those guys, the uh, uh, Rosicrucians? Yeah. I, was, I had all the Rosicrucian literature. You know, I was really into that Egyptian mystical meditation. Anything, I was looking for something that made sense. Edgar Casey, I was an Edgar Casey disciple. You know, I read all the books, every book. And I'd have them, I'd be worn out from reading So you wasn't then, picking up from a previous life. I don't know. I think it was just uh, so wasted that I was desperate. But then, the most amazing thing happened. We actually got a special memorial. We got a special prerogative to accept the mercy of the bona fide spiritual master. This was the problem. There was no bona fide spiritual master before. The day had fallen apart. So Krishna had came again in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but the world had uh, lost the disciplic succession, had become obscured by different deviations. And so Sri Prabhupada came and he came to reestablish a path, a special path designed specifically for Kali Yuga. It's so simple. It is so simple. Who can't chant Hare Krishna? Prophet said, even a dog can do it, right? So who can't chant Hare Krishna? Everybody can chant Hare Krishna. So it sounds like people, you know, they would look at us and say, oh, you guys are just, you know, you're always just you know, got a chant, you know, or something. Why don't you just meditate or something? You know, they, they, they were agitated. But the point being is, uh, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was uh, having a discussion with, uh, I want to say, Sarvabhoma, about the Charya. And Sarvabhoma was telling him, you know, about studying the Vedic, the, uh, I guess the Puranas, he's telling him to study. And uh, asking him the conclusion of these different scriptures. Huh? Probably Vedanta Sutra. Yeah, Vedanta Sutra. That's what I was trying to think of. My mind wouldn't come up with it. Exactly, Vedanta Sutra. The Vedanta Sutra. And so, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I, My spiritual masters told me that I, because I'm a fool, I should just chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Saying I'm a fool, so I should just chant Hare Krishna. I don't know about Vedanta Sutra. So, I mean, this is quite unique that we are poised in an age where everything is inauspicious. Ain't nothing auspicious about God. So, one thing is that God realization is super easy. It's super easy now. Like uh, Sri Jab Thak Maharaj one time said, it's like you're in a supermarket and everything's 90% off. Mm -hmm. He said you grab as much as you can in the buggy, you know, just load it up. Everything's a special deal. So this is our situation. So at the juncture of the Yugas, we have uh, what was the changing of the guard. We know that uh, on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, all these uh, kings were killed. Many, many, all the kings basically were killed. And so yesterday there was some discussion about why, you know, you wiped them all out, but then it's just going to come out like that. The point was, Kali Yuga was a big, big deal. It had to come in. And Lord Chaitanya, you know, Kali Yuga had to do its thing. And so all these kings, uh, when they were killed, what happened was, if you study a little bit of history, 
you know, you look and people start talking about, you know, these languages developing, different cultures developing, this culture, this culture, like, and like each one is independent, coming from the Mesopotamia or the Hindus Valley or whatever, right? They got all these speculations about these cultures, the Greek and Roman and all this stuff, right? These cultures were already all advanced and, and according to Shiman Bhagavatam, if we accept the words of Shiman Bhagavatam, then all these cultures were under one God conscious king. And the last God conscious king, I think, was Mahad Jamajaya. Is that correct? Yeah, he came after Mahad Richard, his son. So, at this time, uh, all the planet, all the kings, they all paid allegiance to Mahad Richard. So, Mahad Richard at that time, uh, they had what's called the Banashan system. And everyone worshipped Krishna. Um, everyone respected the Brahmins. The Brahmins were like the head of society. And so people always took care of the Brahmins. They would feed the Brahmins. They would uh, worship the Brahmins. The cows were protected. As a matter of fact, when there was some discussion, some prediction that the cow would be killed in Kali Yuga, people would know it's not possible. It's not possible. This could never happen. No way could that. So it happened. Kali Yuga is a very, 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 um, nasty, dirty age in which everything becomes so contaminated, so less intelligent, just it's not orderly. Chaos is a good word for Kali. It's just chaos. No, nothing fits right. They don't have any order to it. So Maj Brichet could of course, you know, stay dog Kali for some time. As a matter of fact, he he did put Kali in a embarrassing situation and made him go to the uh, uh, place where gold is accumulated. So in the form of a bull, we know there was a, that with Dharma and, and uh, there was that confrontation with Kali in a form of a, 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 of a black sudra uh, with beating a bull standing on three legs on uh, one leg. That one leg of truthfulness. So it was Dharma. And so Mahaj Pritchard came and, and, and chastised him. So he could have stayed and, and kept fighting and stayed in all Kali, but that wasn't the system. The system was that Kali would come, but there would be a way for all of us, each and every one of us. We are the persons that this was all about. This, we are the souls that are taking advantage of the special priority. The special priority was Srimad Bhagavatam had to be. Okay. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is the light. The light in the darkness. The darkness is Kali. And that's what it says. What is that? Uh, Godhead is in essence. And... Yes. I mean, Godhead is light and, and darkness. Is... Nescience is darkness. Therefore, in this age. Um, so, basically, the idea is you know, I messed that quote up. It was on the top of it. I got it all the time. About how. Uh, you know, we, we, we need light in this dark age. This age of Kali is very dark. And so Srimad Bhagavatam is that light. It was spoken. Now, again, it's all a play. We've been talking about this so many times. It's a setup. This is all Krishna's Leela. And but part of that Leela is not just to kill a demon. Part of it is to establish eternal religious principles. So these are eternal religious principles we're talking. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita. All of these scriptures that were written down. And the whole point is it used to didn't have to be written down, of course. We know that. It sounds like it's just a cop out and say, oh, well, they didn't need to write it down before, so they spoke it to to, to make the bait. Well, why wasn't there uh, why wasn't uh, recorded before that? It's like because it really was recorded, but it's recorded in the uh, consciousness of the sages. And they would uh, always speak it. That was the whole point of, 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 of the of the Vedic culture was that you had the sages who carried this knowledge. That's what Brahmins did. Brahmins were um, reservoirs of this knowledge and they would speak it and, 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 and everyone would hear it. So, uh, just like this system was set up with Maj Brikshit, it was spoken, right? This knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken. So, he was cursed, of course, by a, a young boy, a Brahmin's son. And that was a uh, you know, uh, endemic, I mean, uh, indicative of uh, the Brahmin culture falling. So the Brahmin culture failed, 
and it became unqualified. And that's Kali Yuga coming. It's, it's all set up for Kali to begin doing her thing. So the Brahmins became unqualified, first thing, right? And then, uh, and so Maharaj Gurchit was cursed. He could have rejected the curse. He had the power to reject the curse, but he accepted it because he realized that, hey, this gives me seven days to prepare to go back home back to Kali. So he already knew where Maharaj used to with going his grandfather. Maharaj Krishna already knew about Krishna. He saw Krishna in the womb. He was uh, Uttara. And the womb of Uttara was attacked by a uh, Brahmastra from, uh, what's that guy's name? Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama. And so uh, Abhimanu was uh, Maharaj Krishna's father, who was the son of uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira, right? Arjuna. Arjuna, but he was still his grandson, right? So, Maharaj Pritchett knew what was going on. He was playing his role. And so he went to the bank of the Ganges and he said, okay, I have seven days to die on the king. What should I do? And so then all of the Christian's arrangement, the sages came, Sukadev Goksyami, right? Sukadev, uh, parrot. So Sukadev Goswami came and spoke Srimad Bhagavatam. So we're reading that Srimad Bhagavatam. It's eternally uh, existing. On some planets, it's many, many more cantos. So in this, this small orbit version, in our, in our, in our earthly, this universe we're in, small universe. So it was spoken, and this is uh, an eternal leela of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, reincarnated. And so in this age of darkness, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he brought the chanting of Hare Krishna but also the Srimad Bhagavatam class. Uh, Prabhupada established the Srimad Bhagavatam class that we are, you know, these little bodunk western hillbillies and here we are, you know, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya and all the sages are sitting. I bet they're laughing, you know. Check him out. <laughs> Can you believe that, Prabhu? I, I would have never thought it. Swami Prabhupada really did a job, didn't he? Like they, you know, for them to see the miracle, the miraculous uh, manifestation of Lord Chaitanya's mercy, and Srimad Bhagavatam uh, being spoken, and, and, and not only spoken, but also really uh, appreciated in such a way that uh, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam all the way through, you go back home back to God yet. You can't go back home back to God. It's a fact. And then you read Srimad Bhagavatam, I don't know, I know uh, different devotees are, are, are reading, you know, and as you're reading, you read, uh, finish a chapter, and uh, Gokula can tell you that many times there is a benediction there. <laughs> I like those benedictions. Yeah, it's like a benediction, huh? It's like one of those games you play where they have the little cherries you grab or something. It's like, it's a benediction that if whoever reads this will have all their wishes fulfilled or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, so, you know, you weren't thinking that when you were reading it, but when you finish, it's at the end, and it's like, wow, I'll take that. And so, there's so many benefits, but Prabhupada said, I read it directly, it's in the beginning, of Shema Bhagavatam, where he said, if you don't do anything else but sit down and hear, you will go back home back to God. Just by hearing. So, Maharaj Purchit was there and he asked the question, I'm dying in seven days. What should I do? And so then the sages began to explain, well, first off, you need to hear about Krishna. It always comes back to Krishna. Every system, everything, the whole point. And that's why she crawled by the soul, you know, bona fide and, and the, the soul. The integrity is so powerful. Prabhupada is the only one who brought it back to Krishna. Everything, everybody is going here and there with their, their nonsense. But only Sri Prabhupada, you know, like when he was going to name this guy, they said, why don't you name it an International Society for God Consciousness? And he said, no, it's International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So Krishna, as we become more familiar with this process of Krishna Consciousness, devotional service, we realize how Krishna is everything. 
and even when they were chucking the ocean of milk, I mean, the, uh, the, yeah, the milk ocean to get uh, the nectar, uh, the demigods and the demons got together, and, and, and the Lord told the demigods, you know, befriend the demons and make a deal with them, you know, parlay, uh, parlay yeah, make a, make a deal where you go and you're able to uh, work together to churn this ocean to get that nectar. And it'll be beneficial for you. Don't worry about any of the details. Just go along with whatever they say. If they tell you this, just say, okay, okay, don't argue with them. Yeah, everything's going to work out. Just go with them and churn you up. So he does like that. And, and as they're churning, Vashuki uh, was the rope, the churning rope, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was many instances where even when they were trying to bring the hill, Mandara, is that what it is? Mandara Hill? Mm -hmm. To bring it, it was so heavy that it was crushing them, killing them. <laughs> and so they were trying to bring this hill to use as the churn. And it kept falling on them and killing them. They became so exhausted. And so uh, Lord uh, Narayan had to come and for Vishnu and, you know, revive them, bring them back to life. And then he came with Garuda and he picked up the heel and put it on Garuda's back with one hand and picks it up and he goes in. The whole point of it was that I'm trying to make the point that without Krishna they couldn't do anything. So it's like the Srimad Bhagavatam reiterates that point about 25 billion times. Huh? Without Krishna we're nothing. We may think we're something but we're just fools with nothing. We can't do anything. As my, as my grandmother used to say, you can't pour pee out of a boot with the instructions on the heel. It's like an old country saying about how ignorant you are, you can't do anything, you know. And so, you know, the second aspect of it is they got there and, 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 and it, you know, they needed to turn it, but it kept sinking. And so then, uh, of course, Lord Kurma comes. So Lord Kurma comes and he supports. It just so happened that he had an itch. He wanted to scratch. So he liked, he loved that churning on his back because it scratched the itch. <laughs> so Lord Karma was enjoying like that, but the point was they couldn't churn without fishing. So fish incarnate is karma. Uh, and then they're churning, what happens? They burn out. They don't have the strength. They're just so weak. They can't. They churn and they churn and they churn. They start passing out and dying and stuff, you know. So Krishna has to come and revive them and then he entered into the demigods in the mode of goodness. He entered into the uh, demons in the mode of passion. And the Vasuki is the mode of ignorance. He entered into them and gave them new strength. So basically he did it. <laughs> Why is that important to us? Because Krishna is the doer. We hear it a million times throughout our life. We're not the doer. Krishna is the doer. Vasudev is everything. Vasudev is Vasudev is so Krishna is everything, right? So if we actually start thinking that I'm doing something, of course we usually get ourselves in some kind of predicament, right? And especially if we resist the admonition, the admonition that we should always uh, satisfy Krishna's senses instead of our senses. It's a hard thing to come about and change. You know, to start explaining that, that we should always try to do what Krishna, make Krishna happy instead of what makes us happy. And, and once we develop that kind of mentality, uh, and that's the reason Bhakti Yoga exists. That's why you have the Bhakti Yoga system to learn that simple message. To satisfy Krishna's senses is the goal of life. To always know Krishna's two Bhagavan Tvayam Vasudeva Sadarami Ti. To always know that and to always understand when the sages come, uh, you know, when, when the sages, uh, when Aditi, uh, uh, when the demigods, uh, the demons and Balimars took over the heavenly planets, defeated all the demigods. They were beaten. They were, they were totally useless. Balimars had a benediction from Brigham Muni, and so he was so powerful that uh, he took the heavenly regions, and so they were all gone. The demigods had to go hide. <laughs> And so then, uh, Aditi, who was the mother of the demigods, became very despondent. And Kashyapa Muni had been doing meditation for a long time. And Kashyapa Muni comes back and he said, uh, Why are you so 
so despondent. Something doesn't look right here. You're not happy, you know. Did, did you not receive a guest or something when they came? Did you, you know, do something? And, and uh, she said, no, help. And she came, you know, the, the demons have come and taken the kingdom from my I got to my children, and I'm not happy about that. And so she said, I want you to do something about it. So let's catch out the money and pray to say, you know, he smiled a little bit first. And he said, it's funny how attached you are. He said, really, really amazing how affection is so strong that you're just worried about something like that. In other words, his meditation was so far removed from this attachment, and he was seeing, oh, that's how... That's what attachment is. So you're worried, you're unhappy because someone took your kingdom. Well, how would you be attached to a kingdom? It's not very happy. It's like a waste of your time, you know? Why are you so affected like that? But he didn't say anything. He said, well, listen, I'd like to help you. I really would. But the truth is, I'm going to be honest with you. There's only one person that can help you. It's Christian. So he said, I'm going to give you a prayer. It's called, uh, what's that, prior vata? What is it? That 12-day uh, process, something, vrata? Prior vata. Huh? But you said what? Right. Yeah, prior vata. So you have this 12-day thing. He said, I'm going to give you this to please Krishna. So in that, Prabhupada pointing out, this is a, a process by which one can please Krishna. So the whole point is, you have to have a process. So... Prabhupada came and he's given us a process. The process works. The problem is, we don't have enough conviction to understand, you know, it's like how to fully commit ourselves to Krishna consciousness. This problem. We need to fully commit ourselves to the process and to become detached from everything other than this process of devotional service. We don't have enough, we're not convinced enough. So therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing it repeatedly, 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 over and over and over and over and over, maybe more lifetimes over and over and over. And Bhagavatam Jamanamate, Yama Antipatate, Vasudeva Sarvamiti San. Many, many births of death, one who's actually a knowledge surrenders to me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all things. Such a great soul is very rare. But, what's a special prerogative? In this yoga, you can do it one lifetime. Prophet said when he's here, he looked at his in the eye and said, You can go back home by the other in this lifetime. Right there, looking at it. Wouldn't some equivocal thing, maybe, could be, whatever. No. He looked right in the eye and said, You can go back home by the other in this lifetime. He leaned forward, very demonstrative. I'm not flattering you. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, no room for doubt. That's the special problem we have. <laughs> we, us, 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 spirit beings, Totally absorbed in Kali Yuga. Have the chance. If we, if we, if we get serious now. I was talking to my wife this morning. I said, it's easy to be serious when you're old. You know, I said, I, the thing is, when you're young, what do you do? You know, because when you're young, you got all this sense of education options. When you're old, it's like, you know, do I, yeah, do, I put, do I put the pain oil on this muscle or that muscle? It's, it's, your senses are debilitated. They're, they're useless, basically. I mean, you can try to fight it, I guess. But the point being is, it's easier to then become like, oh, Prabhu, you have to just chant Hare Krishna. You know, it's, not, it's easy. You tell a young man who just, you know, is absorbed in his life, and it's, for him it's all new and all that. For us, it's like, been there, done it, Prabhu. Ain't nothing there, I promise you. <laughs> So therefore it makes me think that in my case I wasted my life, you know, trying to enjoy my senses, you know. I had a good life, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I had a materially speaking a very good life. But you know, the back backside of that is spiritually you miss out on the most valuable gift. 
you don't use that prerogative properly. So, so at some point, like, better late than never, as they say, right? And he's like, and oh yeah, it's easy, and I, I don't care what, what, when you do it, the point is you're doing it, right? So, you hung around long enough to try it. So I, my whole life was basically wasted trying to enjoy my senses, chasing after these uh, will-o'-wish, the phantasmagoria of sense gratification. So now we're hearing at the end, we're hearing at the end of our life, what do we do? So there's a very good chance, this is my little thing, and I say a very good chance that certain souls, you know, we haven't quite, quite really finished up with the mellow of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So there's nothing negative about accepting if you can become Krishna conscious, no matter what age, what old, what blah, 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 doesn't matter. If we can become spiritually attached to the lotus feet of Krishna, to where we actually are attracted to Krishna, so that everything I'm thinking is to please Sri Prabhupada, that I, I feel when I, when I have the chance to meditate on Prabhupada, I feel Prabhupada's blessings and I know I'm doing the right thing. And I get to that point, right? And we leave our body. So, wouldn't you like to have the chance to again really merge yourself in the Sankirtan movement? And you can imagine what's going to happen with the Sankirtan movement. I mean, you know, the Leela of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement is about to really, really become ecstatic, beyond ecstatic. There's going to be huge kirtans with which people are totally averse to ecstasy. You're going to be, we're going to be part of these kirtans. The kirtan yoga is just starting. <laughs> people say, oh, I go to these yoga centers that have a kirtan. Yeah, it's just starting, it's starting. But it ain't even begin. It's going to be at every town and village, mass sankirtan is going to be happening. And you're going to have these sages that come forward, empowered beings who are devas coming to take part. Why? Because it's so sweet. The devas are waiting to take birth. They need, you know, as soon as there's an opening, it's going to happen. I mean, people thought, oh, we're right in the beginning. No, it takes time. For all this to assimilate and fall into place, but your time is moving, it's just beginning. So, at first, you got to get the situation together. First, you got to build a guest house. <laughs> so, you have to develop everything. Right? And then, and, and, one time the devotee said, But well, why do we do all this if we know, you know, it's just material world and we're going back home, you know, back to God? Why do we build these big communities and these farms and these buildings and all that? What's the point? And you know, I know I said, Prophet said, it's just like you're building a launching pad for a rocket ship. Yeah. So this movement is about to be launched. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan movement is that the temple of Vedic Lanterra is being finished very significant. It's a very significant indication Lord Chaitanya's movement is about to really go. So, well, why would we, you know, I mean, it's been sweet and all that, but we're going to leave. Wouldn't you like to be part of that again? Wouldn't you like to be that soul to come back and, and, and sort of have that, you know, the ability to remember my eternal desire is to serve the lotus feet of Shiva Prabhupada? I mean, I really want to do it. So, when you're young, the first thing you do is you learn how to sit here and chant the Brahma Samhita. <laughs> but you have a real desire. See, it's all desire driven. So if you really develop it, the point I'm trying to make is now, rather than worrying about going back, going back, that it or whatever, we should be worried about one thing. Developing the desire to always be part of the Lord Chaitanya second time. Movement. If that desire is strong enough, if we go, if Lord wants to station you in the spiritual world, no, be great, no problem. That's where he sends you. But the point is, we just want to be part of Lord Chaitanya Sanctuary time movement. We don't want to leave. Lord Chaitanya's movement. That's why somebody like Javan Dharma, he could have went back home to Godhead at any time, but he chose to stay. He's fighting to stay. Why? Because the sweetness is so sweet. You know, it's like you become so attached to the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya's mercy is different than any other mercy. The special prerogative ultimately means synonymous with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. 
The mercy of Sujay Dhanimah who can't be compared to any other Leela. It's the sweetest of all Leelas. It's the perfection of Leelas. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Rasa. So we are kind of like beginning with it, getting it going a little bit, but it's going to intensify and intensify and intensify. It's going to become so sweet that you don't, you don't have to fight your senses just to stop doing nonsense. Your senses are controlled. You're a yogi, Swami. We spend most of our lives just trying to stop being carnies. So when you come in, this thing, this is my argument. If we come in as spiritual beings who are advanced and we take birth in Lord Chaitanya Sankta, which is what Prabhupada said happens, you take your birth and once not finished, show up. You old man, you know you're not going to become pure devotee at this stage. You should be too fallen, you're too bewildered. So, but, but Prabhupada said, it's okay, it doesn't matter. What happens is you take your birth and you complete it again. What's the big deal? So you change your body. <laughs> How many bodies have you changed? 20 billion bodies we've changed. And so we're changing the body. Yeah, you're going to change your body. So does that mean, oh, you know, big deal, change the body. You've got to go back to my body, you got it. Or does it mean, I want to change your body, but the only reason I want to change your body is because I want to go back home back to God in eventually. But before I go or leave, I want to pay back Prabhupada. I want to pay back Prabhupada for what he's given me. I owe him a debt. I owe my spiritual master a debt. What is that debt? He's taken me out into the material world and placed me at the lowest people of what you've done. He said, I want to become one of those people who's distributing that mercy. I wanted to help Lord Chaitanya to distribute that mercy. So that's Lord Chaitanya's Leela. That's why the great sages are not so much prophets that we're not so much concerned with going back or not going back. We want to have a desire to serve Krishna wherever we are. Yeah. So, any questions or comments? You know, I think you can do both. I mean, I think you can actually become uh, from what I've heard Prabhupada say that if you become eternally liberated in this body and you be you know you can be in both places simultaneously. You can help with the Tanya movement and also be in the spiritual world. Yes. Simultaneously. So you can have it both ways. There's no loss. That's a good point. So you're saying Prophet's uh, indicated that you can be in a material body, but you you are like you are well, back yeah. Yeah, material, but it's like but it it's that you're an eternal liberated soul, so their material bodies, you know, not exactly the same. I mean, I, mean, I don't that part yeah. I don't fully yes. comprehend. But I mean, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because we're not the body. I mean, Jesus Christ said the kingdom of God is within us; it's all around us. And Prabhupada sometimes he'd be coughing and somebody would think, oh, he's sick. And Prabhupada says, you have no understanding of spiritual ecstasy. So, I mean, you can be here and there. You know? I mean, many of the, 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 the roadies in the Chaitanya Lila, they're part of other pastimes as well. It's not that we're comparing ourselves. But I, think, I think Prabhupada's given us the chance to do both. The only thing is, because we're in it right now, and Lord Chaitanya Sangha that movement, right? We might be able to do like the thing where, you know, you're, since you're in the system, you don't have to reapply. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, you know, no. you have what they call, what do they call that when you have uh, uh, tenure? Tenure, right. Yeah, you have right. tenure. So we can just just slip right into another Sangha time body. Yeah, that's something that, like, but... Not, again, I don't want to um, try to compare us to the great uh, previous uh, Goswamis and so on, but they they were aware of who they were in the spiritual world, but they were also helping with Chaitanya's mission right there in, in the external world. Mm -hmm. One of them was uh, uh, Shamananda, and he was a Mandari, uh, had a name, uh, in, the, in the spiritual world, but he was also Shamananda preaching. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying that that's yes. all of us, but I think you can also immediately 
you know, be born into the movement and pick up exactly at the point you're at right now. There's, I mean, there's, I don't think it's a black and white thing. I think there's many shades of the evolution of our transcendental perfection. And special deal we have, too, is this. That when you die or leave this body, you know, you got some time in between that you might can take a crash course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and nobody knows. No. You know, you might get a little bit of special incentives, you know, to come back quickly and be engaged. And so, you know, you weren't qualified before, but because you went in that 90-day intensive, you came back. And so now you come back and you're not, you, you, you have a sense of the fact that, you know, you're been doing this for some time, but you manifest, like, what do these souls manifest? The Indra Swami, where does he come from? How does he come like that? You know, it's like, how do you get to be so, you know, I mean, from the beginning, I saw these devotees, sure, you know, I remember one time he walked out to me, and I was on the same time, he walked up to me, he looked me in the eyes, and he said, you have to come into the light, Prabhu. <laughs> I'm like, I want to, but damn, it's hard. Well, you know? What about, you know, in the beginning of Radhanath's book, there's a lot of devotees find it um, difficult to accept. Radhanath Maharaj is, uh, you know, when he's sitting on the bank of the Ganja, Ganja and, uh, Ganges and he's hearing the Hare Krishna mantra. And some people have trouble, and, but I think that, you know, all of us have experiences when we were younger that to other people that would seem, oh, like, you know, you may have had dreams of uh, beautiful celestial palaces right. when you were very small. And so, so I think he was, he's a case of someone who's picking up from a, a, a previous life. Oh, yeah. There's no question. Anybody right. that limits God is a fool. Right. There's no limitation on transcendental reality. No. There's no material. And, and, but again, it's like, I don't think it's a, there's like a one size fits all. Yeah. We're all individuals. It's all based on the brain. Yeah. That's fine.